Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. It's time we talked about bows and Iceborne finally. Everyone's concerned about the nerfs and if bow is a dead weapon or not, but let me assure you that bow is as strong as ever. It's just a little more decoration starved than before, if you can actually believe that. Anyway, let's get into it. So if you already know how to play a bow and know what you needed, then good news, it's pretty much more of the same. Nothing has really changed. If you don't know how to play a bow prior to Iceborne, let me give you a quick rundown on how the bow meta works. First is that you need a mighty bow decoration. That gives you another charge level on your shots, it's pretty much mandatory. Don't waste your armor pieces using a Legiana set bonus for it though, it's just a level 2 decoration. Go farm it. The second piece of the puzzle is Critical Element. Bow relies heavily on elemental damage, so Critical Element is basically mandatory. Now in base game, the elemental crit multiplier for Bow was 1.35 times, and in Iceborne it was increased to 1.4 times. However, in Iceborne we also got a new skill, which is True Critical Element, which increases that to 1.64 times. Unfortunately, True Critical Element is only on the Silver Rathalos armor and requires 4 pieces to use it. So yeah, that's basically every bow set in Iceborne. So if you know everything else about bow, there you go, that's Iceborne bow. If not, let's continue. So other armor skills you need obviously besides mighty bow and crit to help your critical element are your elemental skills. Now sets in Iceborne are not as good as they used to be, so trying to fit a ton of rank 1 slots to get elemental skills is extremely difficult. But I would recommend using the elemental charms to fill that in. Now, Fire doesn't have to do this because you can use the Alpha versions of the Silver Rathalos armor, which has Fire Attack on it already, and you can save the Charm slot for like Critical Eye or Attack Boost or Agitator or something else. Thunderbells can also use the Kirin arms, which are extremely efficient, but for the most part, all the other elemental bows and their sets are similar. Also, the MO skills Spread Up and Normal Up have two ranks now in Iceborne, but remember that spread up is 10% and then 5% for the two ranks, not 10% and 10% like normal and pierce. So if you have room in your sets, I'd recommend going normal ups first, then a rank of spread up. A lot of your damage is going to come from normals, so get those first. But again, most of this damage is based upon elemental, and those only affect the raw motion values. So get all your elemental and crit stuff out of the way first before you get this stuff. For bow choices, it's pretty much more of the same. For Fire, we're going to run Glavinous Bow because the slots are super important here. For Water Bow, we're going to use Korupuke because all the Water Bows are terrible again. Dragon Bow uses Valhazak. Now, Dragon Bone is still good, but Tatsu ran some numbers and tested them on monsters, and Val basically always edged out Dragon Bone by 2 to 4 damage and arrow. But it's still kind of up in the air because you need Power Coats with Val, which are finite, and you need to keep parts tenderized to make better use of the raw. So I'd say they're still interchangeable for the most part, but Val's going to be the go-to. With Thunderbows, we also have two options that you actually want. Toby Kadachi and Zenogre. Toby has higher element and Zenogre has higher raw. There are some monsters that have better elemental hit zones that you want to use Toby for, and tenderized hit zones with better raw values, you'll want to favor Zenogre. It's going to depend much on the monster you hunt, but once we get actual hit zone data, we can make better judgment calls for that, but you do want both of these bows. Ice is in a similar boat, but I think it might just be a single case scenario. Legiana is still the go-to ice bow, but Volcana has a use on Zenogre, who doesn't actually have a huge weakness to ice. It's there, but it's not that high. Volcana does end up out damaging Legiana here, so you probably want to use it for that at least. But other than that, Legiana beats it on everything else. And that's pretty much all the bows you actually need for now. Maybe Rajang will give us a better Thunder Bow, because we really need it, but that's it. For bow augments, they're pretty much all the same. You want the first augment to be critical per the usual, 10% more affinity is really high and we're running crit element. The rest of your augments should be elemental augments because, yeah, element. All bows that can have custom augments should be elemental as well, just stack that shit. I haven't really gotten around to making some of the more meme worthy builds like Frostcraft Dragon Pierce or Raw 1000 Dragons, but they're on my to-do list. Heroic's versions of these could actually be pretty insane on paper. That's not going to be for a while, I'll do that another day. Now I say that Rapids is going to be a lot of your damage because pre-Iceborne we checked the DPS calcs on bow rotations and quick shot, Rapid, Rapid, Rapid Power was the optimal DPS outside of Dash Dancing. So we end up doing Rapids a ton. Now Stamina Management in Iceborne is not as big of a deal as it used to be as it's a lot easier to run Constitution and Stamina Surge skills thanks to the level 4 decorations. So you do have many more opportunities to dash dance or just dash into rapids to keep your DPS up. 
this combo rotation is still optimal in Ice Horn, though, so that's cool. Uh, other talking points. Uh, oh, yeah, Dragon Pierce. Uh, don't use that. Mm, 1,000 dragons. Okay, here's a lot to talk about. You can make this work on Wake Up to cause a stagger if you have Slinger Ammo, but don't focus on this attack, please. You end up wasting a lot of time sheathing to pick up Slinger Ammo, and then the recoil from using this attack is horrendous. You're better off just dash dancing for damage. Of course, you can make specialized sets by running Cry Raw and Heroics, but outside that, it's really not something you want to focus on. It's fine to use, just don't go out of your way to collect ammo and use it, please. Another huge part of Iceborne bow gameplay is making an effective use of your claw attacks. So when you claw stagger a monster, or what we call a clagger, you don't need a claw it right away. You can dash into rapid and then power if you already have max charge, or you can dash into two rapids and power if you don't. That still leaves you with enough time to claw the monster and get your claw attack off. This is great because the monster is basically stationary and you just get free hits in. Even if the monster face is already tenderized, just do it this way, the claw attack for bow actually hits pretty hard. Now outside of that, bow pretty much plays the same as it always has. We're still running constitution 1 at least, but now you can at least fit in more and some stamina surge, so that's cool. But ultimately, bow gameplay didn't really change from base game to Iceborne. The nerfs didn't really affect bow at all, I suspect that it was mainly there to justify having super critical element. So that was kind of a fair trade. Bow is still a top tier weapon, so don't worry about the nerfs at all. And yeah, that's basically Iceborne bow. So that's all, thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.